Hey everybody, I'm in the desert, and this video is brought to you by Established Titles. I've held many titles on this show. Food expert, handsome bandana guy, Mark Weens' best friend, but today I'm a lord. That's right, Lord Sonny. I'm officially a lord, and that's because of Established Titles. Established Titles is a company that allows you to buy as little as one square foot of dedicated land in Scotland. Based on a historic Scottish custom, you'll be dubbed as Laird, Lord, and Lady, and receive a crest and an official certificate with your new title on it. With this certificate, you could officially change your name to Lord or Lady, then sport it on your credit card, plane tickets, and more. But hey, this isn't just a vanity project. Established Titles is providing a fun, new way to help the environment. With your purchase, they'll commit to planting a tree to help with the protection of the beautiful, pristine woodlands of Scotland. Their primary goal is raising funds to support global afforestation efforts through charities such as One Tree Planted and Trees for the Future. Established Titles is running an early Black Friday sale. Right now, if you use code BEFRS, you get an additional 10% off. Go to EstablishedTitles.com slash BEFRS to get your gifts now and help support our channel. Now, on to the show. In this video, you'll discover an Indonesian tribe with some of Asia's most unusual food. Take the brain and then you can eat. You start with the brain. Yes. And an even more mysterious way of life. But first, let's back up. We're now in South Sulawesi, Indonesia. A two hour drive from Makassar City will bring you here, a village in the middle of nowhere. This is where you'll find the Bugis people. Least scary motorcycle gang ever. An ancient culture with unique food customs. It's just so awesome, I've never seen anything like this. And a way of life that's not always easy to understand. What's he doing? The most holy among the Bugis people is the Bisu. He's reading the coconut. Reading? The so-called multi-gender healers, who, before Islam, were believed to be the intermediaries between the people and the gods. Today, I'm on a mission to learn about this culture and its food. Good job. <laughs> all day, I just repeat whatever they say and they love it. It all starts with breakfast. What is going on here? Many kinds of traditional cakes. Is this usually the size of your typical breakfast? We do not eat all like this. Just some of them? Yes, some of them. A typical breakfast here might include these colorful cakes. Doughy, sweet donut holes made with a rice base. But the options don't end there. What is this one called? Dange. Dange. This carb-heavy creation is made with glutinous rice flour, grated coconut, and brown sugar. Seems simple enough until you see how they cook it. A superheated mold of clay stuffed with this calorie-dense mixture. Then it's sealed with brown sugar and left to sit on a banana leaf where it continues to cook. Is this something that you grew up with? Yeah, I eat a lot when I was growing up. This is uh, one of my favorite cake. Do you like tonga? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, cool. <laughs> And cigarettes. Oh, yes, of course. How many cigarettes would you say you smoke in a day? Three packs of uh, cigarettes. That's impressive. Yes, <laughs> yes continue. <laughs> yeah, continue. The donge cake can last for months. In the past, it used to feed fighters on the battlefield. Now, it's served as breakfast. Mm. Amazing caramelized taste. It's sweet, it's toasted, some parts are crunchy, some are chewy. This is really delicious. This is breakfast. Yeah. It almost tastes like a dessert to me. Here's yeah. another type of cake. Barronco. This barranco cake uses banana as its base, mashing it into a paste before mixing it with raw eggs, a load of sugar, and a pinch of baking soda and coconut milk. Now steam it in a vessel of banana leaves. This one is much different in texture, yes, more watery. Cool. Usually we use spoon. Joining me, Mastudi. He'll be doing his best to translate for us today. Nice. Yeah, it's almost like the texture of flan. It's very sweet, almost syrupy. Mastudi belongs to the Bugis tribe, a group located mainly in this part of Indonesia. They have their own language, customs, and of course, food. You know, this cake usually eaten in wedding party, but formerly in 1950s, it is the traditional cake for only king. Oh, really? Yes. Did people ever secretly cook it and not tell anyone? Yeah. Can I ask, are you Muslim? Yeah. yeah. Yes. The Bugis number nearly three million. Traditions here were different before the arrival of Islam. When did Islam become popular in this area? In 1603. Now, faith here reflects a combination of ancient Bugis beliefs and traditional Muslim practices. This means, in spite of their Muslim beliefs, they also recognize the existence of five genders. The most important among them, the Bisu. The villagers call him Bisu Nani. Bisu is a multi-gender indigenous within community. 
a genderless figure who is believed to be a preserver of classic Bugis culture. So what came first, the tradition of the Bisu or Islam? Before Islam came, Bisu was there. The Bisu belongs to an ancient community, a group of chosen people who were revered back in the Bugis Empire thousands of years ago when they were advisors to kings, healers, and shamans. It's not good if there is no Bisu. In Bugis society, the Bisu is treated with the utmost respect. Commoners and royalty came to the Bisu for advice and healing a type of healing that I'll soon experience. But first, today's epic Bugis meal begins with a single goat. All this creature will be utilized from front to back, top to bottom, but the most coveted offering requires the head. Once cleaned, this cranium is cracked in half. Now it's ready to receive a layer of flavor paste, including a blend of turmeric, lemongrass, chilies, pepper, and cinnamon. Next, they take that head with the seasoning caked inside, and they're going to wrap it shut with an intestine. With an intestine! It's just so awesome. I've never seen anything like this. It's very resourceful. I mean, they're using the intestine almost like a rope. She's literally nodding the animal's guts right now. How heavy metal is that? And consider, this is technically halal food. This Franken creation joins a pot along with cubed goat meat, more spice paste, and tamarind water. After boiling a bit, they add coconut milk to smooth it out. This is the land portion of our Bugis Surf and Turf. Boom, right here. Now for the seafood. Guys, a ton of traditional food is underway today. We're gonna see a lot of food and a lot of new creatures. Masapi, this is a local type of eel. It starts with a tight coiling of the eel and then shoving a steak through its body multiple times, like a giant lollipop. It smells incredibly fishy here. I wish you guys could smell, I, no, I mean, I'm glad you guys cannot smell what it smells like right now. This is gonna transfer over the fire, but in the end, this will not be a grilled fish. This is actually gonna become a soup. While the eel is grilling, a coconut also hits the flame. But this coconut will not be used for our meal. Rather, it's a serum required for my private appointment with the bisu. What's he doing? He's reading the coconut. Reading? Healing sessions like this are how most bisus earn their living today. He's talking to God. They're the only conduit through which communication from God to human can travel. Drink. I drink? Yes. Already? Yes. Okay. With this rare inherited knowledge and power. Oh, more. Three times. The bisu can alter nature, putting an end to the decaying effects of entropy, yeah. healing you, and making you whole again. Now, at least that's what they say. After this, he can have uh, healing for you. So what is your complaint? <laughs> Doing this show, I go around the world, I eat a lot of different foods. People ask me all the time, do you get diarrhea? And I say, no, I don't get diarrhea, because the reality is I've had diarrhea for the last five years straight. I don't know what it's like to not have diarrhea. Okay. Can you help me? To become a bisu, one must be both male and female. Though this isn't always meant literally. For example, one could be male externally, but female internally. Okay. This combination allows a metagender or multi-gender being to emerge. Let me see. Excuse me, mm. she said. Okay. Bisu Nani realized his particular destiny in a dream when he was 15. Since then, he trained with the Bisu Master for over 15 years. Oh, well, all right. Oh, okay. Just spit on her thumb, put it on my eyebrows. Mm. Uh oh, going under. If you're feeling confused, oh. that might be because it's kind of confusing. And not everyone in the village agrees to these same guidelines. Can you tell me what you just did? Yeah, but yeah. You will never feel it anymore. Ah, how long will it take to work? Usually three days or up to one week. That would be great, because it's been years. A week? I can wait a week. With the promise of a healthy gut, I'm now looking forward to our village feast even more. After the eel is grilled, it's cooked with a lemongrass bundle, coconut milk, and turmeric powder. Then it's simmered until it's finished. Next to the eel, one of the most unique fish you'll find in Indonesia. We are getting close to our final meal here. I wanted to show you a very unique food. This is the box fish. They are frying the outside of the body. What makes this fish so unique? Well, it's like a box, super hard exoskeleton. It's like Clark Kent's jaw. Before it hopped into this frying pan, it was sliced, hit, and split open so they could remove its insides. The meat is mashed, then blended in a mix of flour, egg, spring onion, garlic powder, and salt. 
finally, try the mixture bit by bit before shoving it back in the home from which it came. Mmm! Oh, really? Look, you always know the food is good if the locals cook it, and then they will not touch it at all themselves. This is truly a gift. Mmm! In the US, usually, if you get something like this, it's gonna be a vehicle for sauce. You're gonna need tartar sauce or some flavors to go with it. This is so flavorful. They put such an abundance of spices inside. You don't need anything else. Good job. <laughs> all day, I just repeat whatever they say and they love it. Super delicious. The meat itself, not fishy at all. It's almost like a chicken, like soft, moist chicken breast. It's absolutely delicious. With the eel complete and that heavy metal goat head hitting the table, it's finally time to eat. This is awesome. Joining us, the villagers who helped cook this masterpiece and two special guests, Agus Neni and Rini. We'll get to know them more soon. Let's do a little tour of the table. I mean, we have goat saute. We have goat ribs that have been boiled and then grilled. We have this huge fish, the eel. And then this right here is the star. The goat head literally wrapped in intestine. But I think we should wait to try this. I want to try this right away. The saute. Saute is beloved around Indonesia. I've seen it made with horse, and today they're making it with goat. As it sizzles, they coat the meat with a mixture of soy sauce and pepper. Finally, to bring it home, a thick and flavorful peanut sauce made with peanuts, shallots, garlic, and cayenne pepper. That's good goat. Mm, good. Very nice. It's hardly even goaty. They put a sweet peanutty saute on there, and it's so smoky. That is a saute. Right here, I have a rib. These ribs require a lot of time and love before they wind up here. First, they're braised in a pot for hours with a load of spices like chilies, garlic, star anise, kaffir lime leaves, and nutmeg. After they soften up, throw them over the flame to develop a crust, then slather them in that same thick peanut sauce. Mm. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this lady is hilarious. Oh, I love the glaze. The sauce that's on there. Sweet, nutty, thick, smoky glaze. And the goat is fairly tender, too. Should we try some fish? Yes. Thank you. Mm. The eel has a very unique texture. It's almost like frog meat. They really charred the heck out of it before they actually put it in the soup, so the soup tastes like burning. Can we eat this? Yes. Traditionally, this dish is made to celebrate the birth of a child. In bird ceremony, we must call a leader in this village to touch the brain. Finish? Yeah, finish. Do you have any idea how to eat this? Take the brain. You start with the brain? Yes. Oh, wow. That probably could have cooked a little longer. So I'm just going to get like uh, a quarter of a spoon. Cheers. That, those are some of the best brains I've ever had. Incredible seasoning. Super salty, spicy, fragrant, lemongrass. Just tons of powerful flavors. Mm -hmm. Oh, thumbs up. Obviously, we have the intestines. Yeah. Very chewy intestines, but very clean tasting. No gaminess. Right here, we have the tongue that has been stripped of its skin. This nice lady at the end of the table took all the, well, most of, a lot of the skin off. It's very juicy. Beautiful, chewy texture. I love it. Yeah. This is healing me even more than that, um, than that stomach massage. So one of the things that makes Bugis people stand out is this categorization of genders. Earlier today, I met the Bisu, the central person, almost like no gender or multi-gender. But then you can also have, what, Cholalai and Cholabai? Yeah. In Bugis society, there exist five genders. You've met one already, the Bisu. Then there are the traditional women and men. But after that, there are two others the Cholabai and Cholalai. Put more simply, feminine men and masculine women. Is anybody on this table a Cholabai? On the right side of me. Rini is a Cholabai. He's a man who lives as a woman. It's a Muslim village. A lot of folks here are Muslim. Are you Muslims? Yes. So why don't you wear the hijab? People call him, oh no, you are a man, why are you using hijab? Mm. Something like that. And then is there anyone here who is Cholalai? On the right side of you. Oh, okay. So you're Cholalai? Yes. Yeah. Agustini is a Cholalai, a woman who presents herself as a man. Did you choose that you're Cholalai or did the people around you choose? Guitar. People call her Cholalai. She doesn't like the name actually. What would you prefer to be called? Agus. Yeah. Agus. Agus is a male name. In Islam, is it allowed to change your gender? It's not allowed. So how can the Bisu person exist? Actually, that is the task for a religious Muslim to advise him to be a good Muslim. Mm. But I mean, we cannot force them to be blah, blah, blah. We let them. It's interesting. You have these labels for people, Cholo Lai, Cholo Bai, but it doesn't seem like 
it's a label used to help include people. It seems like a label that's used to separate people. On one hand, she doesn't really enjoy people saying, hey, you are this title, you act this way. There's no benefit for her to hear that. But meanwhile, the Bisu is also somebody who is separated because of their gender. But you look up to that person. Yeah. Yeah. This place is confusing. I wish I could neatly tie this story up with a bow, but I can't. At least not in one afternoon. I came here to seek understanding about a culture very different from my own. But the reality is, sometimes culture is messy. It's layered. It's confusing. As I leave this place, all I know for certain is there's no other quite like it. Also, that Bisu may be addicted to cigarettes. Best Ever Food Review Show is a small team of independent creators, and everything we do here works because of you guys. Click the link in our description to join our Patreon and receive exclusive benefits. A peace. You are a healer, but you also smoke three packs of cigarettes a day. Do you ever worry about that? If he doesn't smoke, he doesn't think very well. Right, yeah, it's called addiction. Yeah. Yeah, withdrawal. I think he thought it was gonna go through quite easy, like uh, cotton candy, but not exactly. He's really trying to get in there. Kind of He's got to loosen it up a little bit, right? Right? Drink. I drink? Yes. Already? Yes. And then what does that do? Yes. Okay. Malundra. Malundra! <laughs> Anybody? I have no idea. Guys, that is the end of the video. I hope that it made sense in the end, because this is one of the most confusing but interesting cultural interactions I've ever had anywhere. A very different culture, a very different tradition, and actually, it's not just our culture, it's overlapping cultures. There's Islam background, there's a Bugis background that predates a Muslim background, and all of it together is really hard to fit and understand in a short video while hanging out with these people for just a short eight to 10 hours. But regardless, man, that goat head tied shut with freaking intestine, Badass. Guys, that is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Peace. All right, I adopted all these kids. Isn't that nice of me? Just kidding. They have real moms and dads.